guys, Pete here again from RC Airplane World. Just thought I'd share this with you. I'm just going to run up my Sinbad. Uh, now, this is my Pitchler Sinbad powered glider. Wow, more of a glider, really. Um, but yeah, nice, lovely model. Two and a half meter wingspan. It's been, I would say, two years in the making but only because we went through a house move and a house extension and a load of other stuff so it's been a it's been a bit of a stop start project this one um 3d printed pilot i've got a little 3d printer that i like to um do pilots and what have you various bits and pieces that file the 3d file actually came from thingiverse if you're familiar with 3d printing you're sure to know of thingiverse.com uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to run the motor up through the watt meter. So I just thought I'd share with you, if you're not familiar with watt meters, they're nothing new and there's probably already, oh well, not probably, almost definitely already a million or so videos on YouTube of watt meters and what to do with them. But I thought I'd share with you. This is my little one. It's a fairly generic watt meter. And the purpose of a watt meter, you basically connect it between the battery on the input side, the ESC, electric speed controller, on the output side, run the motor up, and you'll get various readings of the power being produced, the current draw, the voltage of the battery, and the watts being produced. Um, and it's just, it's a very safe way of determining a power, an electric powertrain setup if you're into your electric flight. If you're a beginner in the hobby and you've just sort of stumbled on this by chance, you don't worry about this. You're not going to be using watt meters yet. But as you get more into the hobby um, and you want to experiment with various brushless motor, lithium polymer battery setups, prop sizes, particularly prop sizes, because um, changing a propeller on an electric motor drastically affects how much current the speed controller draws. So the danger is that you put too big a prop on and the speed controller works, works too hard, draws too much current and burns out. So these things are very handy for, for working out, you know, the um, various powertrain components to use. And also there's another little useful thing called a watts per pound rule in the radio control flying hobby. And it's basically the number of watts per pound in weight of aircraft. And there's a, a general a rule of thumb, so many watts per pound equate to the type of plane you you want to fly and i'll put i'll, I'll write down the values um, they're not set in stone and you'll read different values depending on who's written them but the general ballpark figures are the same um, you know we're talking 50 watts per pound is a slow flyer very light wing loading 100 watts per pound is generally okay for your average sport flyer you you know average trainer airplane and then you go up 150 200 watts per pound you're talking unlimited vertical performance that kind of thing so it's it's, it's just a vague um, reference of what you can expect from a plane and i know this sinbad i've weighed it in it's just shy of six pounds so i'm going to run this up through the watt meter we'll see how many watts we're producing and then just do the calculation, just out of interest, nothing more than that. Right, I'm gonna hook it up. Again, battery on the input side, ESC on the output. I'll hook it up and then come back. Okay, so we're hooked up, we're powered up. I've got my trusty JR DSX9. Now you can operate these watt meters, these particular ones, through the PCM knob. And all you have to do there is disconnect the speed control lead that normally goes into the throttle slot of the receiver there. It's this one, this side, that one, that's the throttle. So that's going to the ESC. Disconnect that, 
put that in the appropriate connection of the watt meter and then that knob will let you control the the throttle the motor power rather than using the uh, transmitter i'm going to use the transmitter instead i'm hoping the phone's going to stay in place i've got a very very heath robinson tripod set up here so okay so i'm just going to run it up obviously safety is paramount um you've got a spinning prop you obviously need the prop on to use the watt meter properly because just running up an electric motor with no prop is going to be totally meaningless. Um, so yeah, so safety is paramount. Make sure if you're doing this in a workshop or anywhere for that matter, make sure the plane's safely restrained. There's no, you know, little kids in the way, that kind of thing. Just common sense, radio control, safety stuff. Um, this is restrained. I'm going to put my hand on it as well. So let's run it up and you'll see, if you look at the watt meter screen, you'll see some figures change. Right, I'm just going to, I'm going to, like I say, the plane is restrained, but I'm going to hold it here as well because, and I know my hand's a bit close to the prop, but it's fine. I've been doing this a long time. I can just see the watt meter blowing off. That's all I'm thinking. Okay, so let's, let's power it up again. That was up to full power and I'll disconnect everything, turn everything off and then we'll come back and have a look at some numbers. Right, so we're all powered down. That was a uh, nice little test. By the way, this was just with a, a three cell. This is the battery I'm going to be using for this glider. It's a, a three cell, 3000 milliamp hour Ternigy uh, Nanotech. It's actually a couple of years old, but it's had very little use. There's no puffing. I've cycled it a few times to check it. Seems fine. And as for the connectors, the blue connectors, just in case you're wondering, these are the EC3 connectors. Um, not as popular as the JXT these days and even the Deans, but I just prefer them. I, I think it's because I, I um, had a lot of hobby zone, park zone, e-flight planes several years ago and these were the standard connectors and i've just always stuck with them so that's just my personal preference they work they're very easy to connect and disconnect unlike the deans which can be a real pain sometimes um but yes anyway i i digress i digress you saw then the the display we were getting in terms of values in the top left was the battery pack voltage the top right was, oh dear, I've forgotten already. But anyway, it's the the bottom right is the was the important one. That was showing how many watts and also how many milliamp hours, um, milliamps are being used. The bottom right was cycling through three or four various readings and it's the watts we we're interested in. Now it got up to 400, just over 400. I think it peaked at 413 watts. Rounded down to 400. Um, that was at full, full power. As I said, the, the glider weighs just shy of six pounds, but we can round it up to six pounds. So the watts per pound calculation is basically 400 watts divided by six pounds comes in at 66 watts per pound which is fine for a, a plane of this a plane of this style this type you know it's a, a vintage glider the motor is rarely going to be flown under power 
that I slope saw. I, that's my preferred radio control flying. Um, I slope saw, so the motor is literally just to get out of get out of trouble free card. Really, if if the if the sink comes in, the lift goes. The motor basically saves landing out at the bottom of the slope. Um, so it's never it's, this is never going to be flown around under power. It's a glider with a motor for emergency situations. So because of that, 66 pounds, uh, 66 watts per pound is fine. It's, if it was under 50, I'd, I'd be a bit concerned because that's getting a bit, um, you know, a bit, bit weak, a bit low in the figures. But 66, plenty of power. I could feel, I could feel it the way I was holding it. I could feel it, the amount of thrust being generated and how, how much it was trying to be pulled forward. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. So just to recap, we peaked at just over 400 watts. The model's just on a smidge under six pounds, call it six pounds for easy maths. And uh, yeah, 400 divided by six comes out at 66 thereabouts. So we've got a watts per pound value of 66. Cheers guys, if you're not familiar with watt meters, hopefully you are now a bit more familiar with them. Um, they are a very useful piece of kit. And as I say, the more you get into the hobby, especially if you start experimenting with powertrain setups, you need one of these. So they're, they're very cheap to buy, very simple to use. Um, so yeah, there you go. Just say goodbye to our little guy there. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, that we've even got Lottie there. Oh. She's always curious. She always wants to know what's going on. Don't you, darling? Don't you just love the way dogs cock their heads like that? All right, guys. See you soon.